Got two young Finnish players. They have them sitting together in the locker room in, in Calgary. They feel they can be a support staff for each other. Ordeal's come from the East Coast Hockey League this year to get his start, but it's Marcus Granlin that's generating a little bit of buzz here. 44 points in the American Hockey League. The younger brother of Michael Granlin, who had such a tremendous Olympics for Finland. Marcus is a little bit different player, maybe not as quick, but very crafty, a heads-up player, a pass-first player, but he does have 23 goals in the American League. Bob Hartley asked an interesting question this morning. Do the Flames have the advantage because the Kings got in at 3 in the morning after playing last night, or do the Kings have the advantage because they played after a lengthy break? Well, I would, I would think, given the way some of the games around the league have looked, the, the team that's played before tired as they may be, is going to have a little bit of an advantage. Look at the number of goals around the National Hockey League. There's some rust to be banged on. And the Kings scored six last night, which is a rare occurrence for them. They had scored eight in the eight previous games prior to the Olympics. Jared Stoll centering a line with Dwight King. And the first shot on Ordeo is into the club. And he'll hold on for a faceoff. One of the new traditions that that the NHL players seem to do is they get their young guys out. Here they are. They're pretty excited. They go out for their first lap before warm-up, and you see Captain Mark Giordano hangs back with the rest of the club. So these guys are the only two on the ice skating around. There's really nowhere for them to go. They go on the ice, and they turn around, and they're out there. It's like the beginning of practice. But both excited to get going, like every player that plays their first NHL game. And for Ordeo, he gets to feel the puck early on a rather easy handle for him, but nonetheless, he gets to hang on to it as the game gets underway. Nice Comer won a face off from Justin Williams after Matt Stajan and Andre Kopitar had been waived, so Bob Hartley wants the Stajan line up against the top center of the Los Angeles Kings, Andre Kopitar, who was referenced prior to the game for his leadership of that surprising Slovenian team. And Speaking of the Olympics, here comes Drew Doughty to the attack on the backhand, a centering pass that doesn't get to the net. Williams along the boards. He feeds a quick shot to Foley, and that goes up high off the glass. Kopitar in behind the net. He's checked by Giordano. Stajan trying to clear it, but Kopitar back on it. He had two goals and an assist last night in a comeback win for the Kings in Denver against the Colorado Avalanche. Here's a pass, and David Jones' shot is blocked by Jake Muzzin. Back the other way goes Jordan Nolan. Inside the line, Nolan stops up, a pass behind Mike Richards. Nolan on a line with Jeff Carter and Mike Richards tonight, at least to start. A little bit of a surprise, he's not usually up in the top six. An offside call. Tonight's game plan brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of the NHL. Usually so stingy defensively, Daryl Sutter's Kings really had trouble with the avalanche speed through the middle of the ice. They'll want to tighten that area up. And for Calgary, it's be awake early. We have seen many examples here. Montreal has scored five on Pittsburgh, who hadn't played yet. Um, Detroit's got six on Ottawa, who hasn't played yet. You better be ready to go out of the game here. Calgary wants to make sure they keep themselves on the right end of the game early here in their first game. Fourth lines are out. Lyndon Bay, the former Medicine Hat Tiger, centers for the LA Kings. And Marcus Granlin is on the ice, wearing number 60 for Calgary. Watching Bay there along the boards as Lyndon Bay will cycle it back into the corner. Kyle Clifford did not play last night in Denver. Back on a line with Lyndon Bay here tonight and Trevor Lewis as Chris Russell will slow things down and Butler will move ahead. Here's Chris Butler to the red line again. Get a little uh, practice with Matt Stajan earlier in the week and practice uh, one of the indications that Calgary was ready to get into team action again. After a while, you practice too much, and you've you had enough. Uncle, something happens, the two guys scrap a little bit. It's really not much, except it makes a nice story, but it's time to play some games. Michael Backlund's on the ice for Calgary. He was red hot going into the Olympic break, and he keep it going. An icing call against the Kings. The Kings have really struggled to score this season, and going into the break where they had won just six of their previous 22 games, Mike Richards is one of their players that has really hit the ditch. One goal in his last 35 games for Daryl Sutter. They've really struggled with offensive production from the middle of the ice. They got a real nice night from their centers last night. Kopitar had two goals. Jared Stoll had one. Michael Backlund with four consecutive home multi-point games as it's flipped down the ice by Nolan. 
Back in behind the net, T.J. Galliardi will one-hand it. And Chris Russell will start the breakout for the Flames. Russell lost it in. Dustin Brown pounces on it in. Scores! Dustin Brown bumps a slump. And the Kings captain has the icebreaker and the first goal scored on the young Finnish goaltender. Well, Brown's 11th of the season is remarkably bad break for Calgary and Chris Russell. Is Russell, one of the game's better skaters, just blows a shoe here. He's got the puck, he's in full control of it. He falls down, Brown gets it, and then gets to the front of the net. And he's just stronger than Ordeal's pad. Brown's gonna get the puck. Look how he jams it to the net and then keeps his stick on the puck and pushes it by the Calgary young goaltender for Brown's 11th of the year. And here are the Flames trailing in a game against the team you don't want to trail very much against. Unassisted goal for Dustin Brown, first in 14 games, 11th of the year, and just his second on the road. And he's in it by speed, took a heavy wallop there from Jarrett Stoll. In behind the net, Camilleri looks for it as they battle here behind the goal. Now Sean Matt Monahan cycling it back, Colbert looks for it. And moving up on the play is Vladislav Speed, father play for it. Czechoslovakia back in the Olympics in 1964. And he participates 50 years later for the Czech Republic. Boynov gets things organized and now Muzzin advances. Keens the red line, sends it in. Ordeo stops it up. There's Kopitar on the four check. Up along the board, plays it back for Dowdy. Cross for Muzzin. He'll send it deep. Justin Williams in the corner. Tracked by TJ Brody. David Jones quickly off the boards and Giordano will lead the rush. Over the line and they'll call it offside. Boma a half step ahead of the play. Good news for Los Angeles is that they get a couple goals last night from Andre Kopitar and Jared Stoll, their centerman who had really struggled. Maybe this late part of the season will ignite Dustin Brown too. He takes that turnover on the D to D pass that Chris Russell stumbles with and Brown's early marker gives them the lead. Now Calgary's been outscored by 20 goals in the first period this year. They give up a lot of goals anyway, but man, they play from behind a lot. And we're behind here yet again. Well, as you mentioned, tough team to do it against. Uncle Backlund centers. There's Hoodler circling in the king zone. Now up top, sends it towards the net. That one wide. Ricochets to the side of the net. Backlund bounced there by Richards, knocked off his feet. Hoodler looks for the loose puck. It's in the skates of Muzzin, and Backlund, from the seat of his pants, is able to get it into the corner for Galliardi. T.J. Galliardi to the point for Giordano. Sends it to the net, deflected by Backlund. And Jonathan Quick alert on that. Backlund up with it again. Into the high slot. Brody sends it deep again. Good shift for the Backlund line with Galliardi and Hoodler. Gary Hoodler gives it to Galliardi up high. And across. Giordano couldn't handle it. Brody's got it. Backlund left it. And Galliardi after it again in the corner. Comes up with a puck against Dowdy, and now Dowdy will bounce it down the ice. They've got enough for icing, it does, so Kings will not be able to make a change. Michael Backlund's really takes some giant strides in his game this year. Look at the chance he gets now. He gets into the middle of the ice, much more assertive than he's been in the past. He deflects this Giordano shot for a difficult Jonathan Quick save. And, of course, Michael Backlund from Sweden lost the bet in the Calgary Flames room and he's been sporting the Team Canada t-shirt all week. <laughs> oh, that's such a good thing to do. By the time the Swedes got to the gold medal game, they didn't have any forwards left. Well, Marcus Johansson got the call instead of Backlund uh, and played well for Sweden, but the way Backlund has played of late, it's been interesting to see him there. Shot by Russell, handled by Quick. Swung back in deep behind the net, and there's Camilleri on the far side. Lots of rumors about Mike Camilleri moving, and some of them involve his former team, the Los Angeles Kings, a team that Camilleri historically has played well against. A couple of goals this year, and eight in 15 goals against Los Angeles. Here's 
Dowdy. The backhand flip to center, knocked down there. And back into Calgary Ice. That center is picked off by Boyan off, and he'll send it deep. Chris Butler up with the puck. Dead man's West Garth and Granlin to the line. Lost control. Granlin will chop it deep, and West Garth goes after it. Here's Robin McGear, first time back in Calgary since the trade to Buffalo a few years ago, and Robin just off playing in his 1,000th game prior to the Olympic break against the Philadelphia Flyers. Comes in as one of the hottest game players offensively, goals in back-to-back -back games. The first time in his career he's done that. You'd think somewhere along the line of those 1,000 games he would have banged a couple of back-to-back. -to -back. Back to back, separated by almost three weeks of the uh, break. Uh, details, details. Here comes Tyler to fully over the line, dropped for Williams. Justin Williams centers. And Ordeo got the paddle down on the pass to block it. Stajan starts the flames back. Giordano through center, over the line, and that extra move put Boma offside. Dustin Brown with the icebreaker here in Calgary. It's 1 0 Los Angeles. 832 games over 11 seasons as a member of the Calgary Flames. Hard to believe it's the first time back for Robin at the Saddle Dome. I thought for sure in his highlight video they were going to have him steamroll an Alex Hemsky somewhere. It seemed every time Calgary and Edmonton played, Hemsky would be right into the tracks of Regeer. Not a lot of offensive highlights, but that's all right. He was a mainstay on the blue line and a he part of that run to the Stanley Cup Final in 2004. He was taking a little heat from his teammates during the video. They had some video up there when he was a young man with a full head of hair, and he was taking it pretty good from his teammates. Did we all at one time, Ray? Yes, that was all uh, that's a distant memory. There's Kopitar centering. Justin Williams has it, trying to sneak it through. to Poland's pass blocked by Brody. Williams a whack at it. Their back end just rolled wide as Willie Mitchell moved up and came close. Oh, Ordeo following the puck lost his head a little bit. Mitchell's backhander just was cued wide. Now a centering pass for Galliardi and quick has to make his first good stop of the night. Galliardi ends up on top and it took a while to untangle. Here's Trevor Lewis back. Springs into the lane zone, and there's Ordeo down to block the wraparound. Well, the NHL on TSN is, or our profile brought to you by Asante, providing complete financial advice, and it's Robin Regeer in the spotlight tonight. In 832 games as a member of the Flames. Paul right. Byron and Chris Butler involved in the trade which sent Regeer to the Sabres. He was brought in with the injury to Willie Mitchell. And Mitchell, who missed most of last year, almost the whole year, with knee surgery and the recurring problem that went with it. Regeer filled that spot. Now with Mitchell back, they feel in their three, and in their rather second and third pairs that they have a solid physical stay-at-home guy. And if Jake Muzzin can fill that role alongside of Drew Doughty, the left side of their defense is big and it's pretty physical, and they would have a nice mix of an offensive guy in Muzzin and two stay-at-home tough defenders in Mitchell and Regeer. The line another offside, and uh, Flames have committed that a few times here in the first period as they get the rust off after the lengthy break. And that's three or four offsides already in the first nine minutes of this period, and as much as you can practice, nothing, of course, as we always talk about, can replicate the game, and it's been one little move at the blue line, a little step here, a little delay with the puck, and they look a little bit rusty so far, which is, quite frankly, very predictable. As for Cavallari, who drives it in after Joe Colburn, and there's Robin Regeer with the hit along the boards, puck to the side of the net as they try and center, and a whack at it by Monaghan wide. Colburn up with it. To turn off the checking of Richards, play to the point, and Butler does keep it in. Sends it deep. Point off leaned on Camilleri. Carter in to help out. It's loose for Richards. Can't clear the first time. Now gets it past Chris Russell, who takes over at center. 
Russell makes a move, buys a little time for a counter change as Byron comes off the boards. One of the players mentioned involved in the deal for Robin Regeer. Back to the point, and Weidman lost his footing. Look out! Brent King nearly had a break. He's deep into the Calgary zone, curls out of the corner, sends it across, and Mitchell missed the pass. Now Stoll looks to center. Brown with a whack at it at the lip of the crease. Up to Westgard. Now Byron with Granlin over the line. Makes a move and now sends it back across. Westgard's backhand is blocked. And getting in the way of that was Alec Martinez. Steve sends it across. And now both teams will make changes with under nine and a half minutes remaining in a first period that's seen just six shots, three apiece, and a goal by Dustin Brown at the three minute mark. Oh, oh. The Kings are fine with this. They got in at 3 o'clock from their game in Denver last night. Nobody at the rink this morning. Several of their players dealing with some pretty serious time lag. It's most of these Olympians are going to find the next 10 days pretty difficult to get their sleeping patterns back to normal. Brody chopped down. The play continues. And some of the fans expressed frustration at the pro penalty was called. Giordano back in his own zone with Williams on his tail. DJ Brody, a backhand to center. Galliardi dropped it off, and here come the Flames over the line. It's Bulma centering it, and that was intercepted by Voinov. Not cleared, and Stajan's after it. And Stajan who scored the last goal for Calgary prior to the break in a 2-1 loss in Philadelphia. It's Butler centering, and that's chipped wide off the stick of Hoodler. Gary Hoodler again, sends it across, and a big stop there by Quick on a hot shot from Chris Butler. Now Lyndon Bay to work, looking for his first NHL goal off the blocker of Ordeo. Kyle Clifford in behind the net for Bay. Trevor Lewis along the boards, tracked by Backlund. In the slot, it's Galliardi picking it off, and Backlund to the attack, Russell it. Jumped up and passed too far for him. There's Mitchell turning away from the checking of Galliardi. Pass into the center of the ice picked off by Weidman and shot weak and wide. Martinez off Lewis and that will slide down in the Calgary zone. For Camilleri. Now Colburn setting it up. Moved by speed and a pass ahead that has Camilleri in the left wing and a big hit there by Dowdy. Drew Dowdy with 137 hits on the season. It's an area of his game that's been pretty active and underrated. Quick lost his footing at the side of the net. Camilleri's got it. Big Colbert back for Camilleri and a shot. And Quick got a piece of that. Nice set up for Michael Camilleri. Richards back for Los Angeles. Then bust through, played off the boards, and this will bounce out. Flames won the first two meetings of the year, both in Los Angeles, and both on goals in the final minute. 2-1 in October, 3-2 in late November. Here's Marcus Granlin rolling back. And Jonathan Quick will hold on to that. Drew Doughty, one of the stars of the Olympics, with the Kings against the Calgary Flames at the Saddle Dome tonight. Before the break, Chris, you were talking about how Drew Doughty's physical play sometimes gets overlooked. Well, it's because he's such a terrific offensive player. I think he's an offensive savant. I don't know that he thinks too much about it. He just does it. He's better than most people. He can skate better than most people. He handles the puck so well. And look at how his skating ability closes the gap on Mike Camilleri. Camilleri's got no idea that Doughty's going to be able to get there that quickly. And his performance at the Olympics was pretty incredible, especially early in the tournament when Canada wasn't getting much from their forwards. It was Doughty and Shea Weber that were carrying the load offensively. Four goals in the Olympic Games, and between he and Carter, seven of the 17 goals that Team Canada scored in Sochi. Kind of funny from a team that's right near the bottom in goal scoring that Canada got a majority of their offense from that club. 
slap a boy off another offensive defenseman for the Kings, but without a point in the Olympic Games, a disappointment for Russia as a team. And Steve of the Czech Republic, another team that didn't have it go the way they would have liked it. And, uh, well, one might suggest that Yuri Hudler should have been there to help out. Right, well, he told right. me he went to Kabul for the break because he wasn't selected. They couldn't have made a bigger debacle of that Czech team if they would have tried to do it. What a what a mess that they had, and as a result, the coach has been piped. So he won't he won't be handling those those decisions no, anymore. No. I think you just made the uh, the prop newswire tomorrow. Well, if they needed help to decide that, that that selection of players was a joke, I don't know what, I mean, my goodness. I, how's Rodham Verbata not on that team? How's Yuri Hoodler not on it? Gargano with the shot, Boma pumped into Quick, and somehow Jonathan Quick still made the stop of David Jones with some heavy traffic in front of the King's net. Jonathan Quick equal to the task, still one of the Kings. Jonathan Quick had an excellent Olympics. He was pretty emotional after the way that they went down to defeat against the Finns in the bronze medal game. Here he's got to deal with all kinds of traffic as Lance Boma goes between Willie Mitchell and Quick. He bounces into Mitchell and then Quick has to fight for position on David Jones's backhander. The Kings wanted to know why there wasn't goaltender interference and the assumption would be that Jones was knocked into Quick by Mitchell. Five games in 10 days in Sochi for Jonathan Quick. Things working ahead is Daddy Rick Wide, Kopitar off the tape with Tafoli. And Jordano will take over. Things are able to hold the zone though as Hooker was stopped up at the line. And Jordano will start again. Kopitar watching him. Swung across by. Backland, and here's T.J. Brody over the line, knocked off his stick. T.J. Galliardi follows up. Galliardi on it. Caused some problems in the King zone in this first period, and that puck deflecting in on Quick. Quick's had three or four deflected pucks that he's had to deal with. He looks exceptionally sharp. He didn't play last night in Denver. Martin Jones did as Jones continues his fine rookie season, and Although he gave up four goals, Jones made a couple of glorious stops in the last three or four minutes to preserve what was a 5-4 lead at the time. That was an old Ray Ferraro era game last night, a little bit of a shootout. But then Jones made some, as you mentioned, some big stops when he had to to help preserve it. Yeah, I know the coaches don't like those games, but it's funny, they're the only ones that don't. Yeah, we don't find 6-4. I don't think we're going to get it tonight, though. NHL on TSN is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Chris, you mentioned earlier on that Mike Camilleri is a potential trade target and LA could be a destination. If there's one area that the Kings have really struggled with, it's trying to find some continuity on their left wing. And this even goes back to their Stanley Cup championship. They've moved people around. They've found a winger in Tyler Toffoli that they're very comfortable with. However, you look at, here's Richards and Carter, and they're with Jordan Nolan, who would be best suited in a in a bottom six role for sure. So a, a player of Camilleri's style seems very attractive at the deadline if you're the Los Angeles Kings. Here's a giveaway by Camilleri. Carter is in, tries to center it, and the pass blocked by Camilleri. Who atones for the mistake and now heads up. Joe Colburn over the line, trying to cut in against the gear. Not able to do so, and now Carter turns it back. Up for Mike Richards. Richards over the line. Takes the shot, now he'll pass back across, and Miss Carter as Ordeo dropped his stick, and has it handed back to him by Dennis Weidman. Mention the left wing spot, Jordan Nolan on that line tonight with Richards and Carter. Last night it was Tanner Pearson who was not in the lineup tonight for the Kings. Here's a shot that wide off the stick to Boma. 
David Jones reached for it, knocked away from him, and Garrett Stoll will take over. Willie Mitchell ahead. Dwight King down the left side. He'll flip it deep from the goal scorer, Brown. On it for the Kings. Takes a hit in behind the net. Now a centering pass. Ordeo down it again. Dustin Brown in his office in the blue paint. Well, Wednesday, Trade Center 2014, as you covered all day, beginning at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific on TSN. TSN.ca, every trade, every deal, everywhere you are. Distraction guaranteed. Presented by Ram. Oh, the last couple of days have brought some rather large names into the into the mix, hasn't there? Whether it's been Marty St. Louis or Ryan Kessler, and we talked about Camilleri and Thomas Vanek will be up for auction, as will Matt Molson, among others. Andrew McDonald, uh, a defenseman with the Islanders who's got a really low cap hit, but going to be an unrestricted free agent. James Duffy will speak with Ryan Burke in our first intermission, and he says he's willing to make a hockey deal, not just move UFAs. It'll be interesting, and I would expect that the two teams on the ice tonight will both likely be in the conversation on trade deadline day, wouldn't you think? I would think so, and let's hope that it is on deadline day and not the three days before. Yeah, they kind of went off script last year against you guys. Oh, the, the, the only concern becomes if one of those big boys falls early, if there's a trade that moves early, then the dominoes go pretty quickly. Some of the speculation involves being a little more patient here just to see what you've got coming off the Olympic break and needing a couple of more games to make those assessments. And that's the difficulty is that there isn't much time. And I, I don't know what two or three games can do for you. Quick whistle there is that went in and out of the glove of Ordeo and Kyle Clifford wonders why the whistle blew so quickly. Well, everybody else on the ice thinks so too as Ordeo looks like he's caught the puck but it just bounces straight out of his glove onto the onto the ice to his right. The whistle is a quick one as obviously Tom Cowell assumed that Ordeo had it and was going to be able to glove the puck. Ordeo's had a pretty interesting year. He started in the East Coast League with Alaska at the start of the year, played four games there and then has had a real good run in Abbotsford in the American League. Dowdy with a shot right on. Ordeo turns that aside. The fourth goalie to play for the Flames this year. And Ordeo from the same hometown, Turku, as Mika Kiprasov mentioned this morning. He watched Kiprasov as a youngster. First remembered seeing him play for the club team in his hometown as a five-year-old. Had a Kiprasov jersey. And if he could be half the goaltender of the previous incumbent here in Calgary. The Flames have themselves a goaltender. Wouldn't that be nice? They're gonna get a long look here at, in the last 20 plus games at Red O'Bara as well. barra has got eight wins on the season, just one of them in regulation, however. He's without a contract for next year, so they gotta make a decision on him. Harry Rammel has one year left. He's still injured, however. The backland shot deflecting wide of the net. He goes after the rebound. Along the boards, Dustin Brown up with it, and four kings through center. Brown over the line, down to the trailer, and that ripped off the stick, up and out of play. Brown pushes Backland off the puck in the offensive zone, and quickly they turn onto the rush, and it's a three on two. But the LA bench right about here is yelling to my right, four, four. And what they mean is they, that Drew Doughty's the guy that is going to be open. And this actually just explodes off the curve of his stick. It's deflected up into the netting and the face off to the left of Ordeo. The Foley fan on that shot. Dustin Brown's had some jump in his first period. A little confidence re-energized in him with that early goal tonight. And they sure could use some more from, from Dustin Brown. He had a really difficult first 55 games of the season. A puck off the stick of Boma, shot hit a leg on route, and now Kopitar with the alley oop pass, looking for Justin Williams, who scored an empty netter on that kind of play last night. 
Williams ending a lengthy throat with that empty netter. As the clock drains in this opening period, Flames outshot the Kings eight to seven, but Dustin Brown with the lone goal at the three minute mark, unassisted. One nothing LA after one, as we join James Duthie and the boys back in studio. Expectation there'd be some rest for the Calgary Flames here tonight after the long break. Ray, we saw that. We also saw some heavy traffic near the end of the period on Jonathan Quick. Yeah, rather predictably, the Flames got off to a little bit of a rough start. Like most teams that haven't played after the break in their first game, they, they didn't have much cohesion getting to the offensive blue line. Three or four times in the first 10 minutes, they went offside. But as the period started to move along, they did a nice job down below the goal line, generating some offense. When the puck came back from below the line to the top, the traffic was, was tough for Jonathan Quick to deal with. He had to handle a couple of real difficult deflections. And I like the Flames' first period. After they gave up the goal where Russell stumbled and Dustin Brown scored, they got a little more physical. They looked like they're back in the flow of the game. But as you mentioned, uh, when the Kings score first, they're a tough team to play against. 24-7-4 when scoring first, and Brown got that opening goal tonight. Second period has been a tough one for Los Angeles, though, on the season, although they changed that last night. They had some offensive prowess last night in that 6-4 shootout against Colorado. Swung deep by Monaghan along the boards. Joe Colburn battles for it. He gets knocked down, stays with the puck. Gamaleri lost it. The Dwight King gets it out. Bob Hartley has set up the next 14 games as if these were the Stanley Cup playoff for the Flames, a simulation. You like that strategy, Ray, to kind of add a little focus to the Flames game? I do, and mainly because even though the Flames have said they've not given up on a playoff spot, Garrett, yet that it's going to be a virtual impossibility to get there. And it gives you something to shoot for, something a little shorter range than looking at 24 games left. Big hit there, Giordano stepped up on his man and created a scoring chance. Here's Stajan from the corner. And that's Stajan swinging it back, and Kopitar read the play, cut off the pass, and the Kings are out. Muzzin will bounce it in. Giordano takes a look, King's changing. Stretch pass for David Jones. Nick Jones trying to center. Off Martinez in behind the net. And it comes to Nolan. Jordan's dad did all right at the Olympics, didn't he? He did a really good job. What a year it's been for, for Ted Nolan to jump back into NHL coaching again and then have such a successful Olympics with his underdog Latvian team. Gave everybody a scare. We thought that uh, the young goaltender Godlevskis would play tonight for the Lightning, but he did not. It was Ben Bishop in goal as Nashville beat Tampa Bay this evening. Puck bounced up to center ice, and Jordan Nolan's got it. Nice pass for Carter. Nolan drives the net, and that puck deflecting into the corner. Galliardi's on it, and here's Galliardi. Good lead feed over the line. A pass for Backlund on the backhand, and that goes wide. Point off ahead. Lyndon Bay through center. Trevor Lewis gives it back to Bay, who curls inside the line. And it comes to Westgarth. He was unable to make a play on it. And Speed wraps it around. And Byron, bank pass ahead. And Westgarth to the red line. This time does get it deep. Marcus Granlin played 3 1 in the first period. He's in on the four check. And Regeer starts the king breakout. Bay at the line, a right wing pass that disrupted, and Westgarth will play it back on the line. Here's Grandlin, a quick shot into the glove of Jonathan Quick. I'd like to welcome viewers who are watching the Raptors game tonight. We're here in Calgary. Dustin Brown, the lone goal scorer, as the Kings lead the Flames one to nothing. Rather odd play where Chris Russell stumbles against the boards and Brown picks up the loose puck early in the first period. He pushes it past Yoni Ortio, making his first National Hockey League start for the Flames. And 
That's been it offensively. There's been no power plays. A Flames team that looked rusty early and played a much better second half of the first period. Here's Stoll with the backhand on Ordeo. Stoll comes up with his own rebound. Another backhand that Ordeo stops. A little collision in front of the net. Dustin Brown lost a stick and he'll head to the bench. He's shaken up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I thought so. As that was a, an odd collision in front of the Flames net. Jared Stoll's backing up. And you see Stoll's stick catch Brown on the right side of the face. Brown's back at the bench. Apparently no worse for wear. T.J. Brody off the boards. Gets past Jones down into the Los Angeles zone. And Andre Kopitar takes over. Kopitar with two goals and an assist at the Olympic Games. And what a surprise story it was for Slovenia to end up in the quarterfinals. Here's a move for Boma and a shot, and Jonathan Quick stops that. One of the things that the Flames have found out this season as they've been auditioning players all over the place is that Lance Boma has developed into a National Hockey League bottom six forward, someone they can rely on. Boma's big and strong. He missed all of last year with an ACL injury and surgery early in the season. I've really liked where his game has, has gone to. It's not just a battering ram on the ice. He's big and he can really skate well, but he's been able to get the puck to the net. That last play was an example of it. Russell dashes back into his own zone. The Richards line out for the Kings. And here's Galliardi who has skated well tonight into LA territory. Galliardi after it, pumping there with Regeer along the end boards. Backlund crashing in. Looks for a loose puck that Galliardi finds. Knocked away by Boyanov, and he'll play it back in for Regeer. Wrapping it around, and Nolan unable to take it on the left wing, and Brody back in his own zone. T.J. Brody with over eight minutes in the opening period, so he's right back up to speed, and there's an icing call against Calgary. Well, get ready to live large with March Movie Madness. See The Hangover Part 3, The Great Gatsby, Two Guns, and so much more only on TMN, the movie network. Contact your TV provider to subscribe. Face off to the right to Bordio with Backlund digging in. Los Angeles, the number three ranked face off team in the league, Calgary, 28th. And the Kings have won 72% of the draws so far tonight. They have five guys in the lineup at over 50%, and those are not players that take two or three draws. They have the centerman plus Jeff Carter, and they have many, many options to go to in the circle. Shoveled along the boards and out. Butler knocked off stride by Clifford, got it back for Brody. Russell looks three fly. That pass is cut off. Lewis. And now it's an offside as Giordano was tied up on that far side along with Kyle Clifford. Tom Cowell, the official, is just saying to the Kings bench, what would you like me to call there? As they were yelling for an interference penalty, Clifford and Giordano get tied up as, Gior as Clifford goes to finish the check. They fall down. Now they're all tied up. Nobody's, you see, Clifford tries to reach his hand over the blue line. That's not going to do it. It's got to be your skate. And so the offside is called. Uh, Stoll direct a little traffic here and win a draw cleanly back to Willie Mitchell as he called it. Sean Monahan lost that draw. Monahan talking about trying to approve his faceoff percentage post Olympics. Like to get it to 50%, but that's a tough task tonight against the Los Angeles Kings. And a lot of that is going to be when he acquires just a little bit more experience and some strength. And we have to remember, just at 18 years old, he's had a fabulous rookie season. And the face-offs will come with hard work for him. Eichmann back at center and sending it across. Vladislav Speed will turn back. I'm sure he would have liked to hear the words of Brian Burke in that endorsement. And First intermission discussion with James Duffy. There's a shot easily kicked aside and neatly gloved and held by Quick. You can't trade everybody. And while people want to move along a rebuild or a retool, 
you need veterans to play alongside your young people and what Calgary has in a player like Schmid or a re-signed Matt Stajan for four years is you have a, a couple of guys that come and quietly do the job that you can rely on and those really become important bridge pieces as you try to develop your younger people. Jones with a backhand and a good opportunity for Jones who's had a couple in this game. Both coming on at his backhand. Now Kopitar out at center. Flip it in, neatly knocked down there. A good defensive play made by Giordano, but here's Williams. Drag in front, and the pass intended for Foley got by him. Justin Williams will try and hold the zone, and now David Jones will play it out. Giordano on the left wing. Going off up his man, and Kopitar, stretch pass. Up for Toffoli who plays it in and will get a king chain. 6.40 into the second period. And it remains 1-0 LA. Good pass ahead. And here's Stajan in. In behind the net, leaves it in front. And it's kicked wide of the net by Chris Russell. Butler now will try and center. And it's Carter away the for Los Angeles. Nolan down the left wing. Ducks past Butler and in deep. They're back defensively, but Nolan stays with it. Works the boards into the speech of Richards. At the line, sends it in, and Carter goes after it. Jeff Carter lost his footing. And it's Chris Butler off the boards and out. Galliardi with a chip pass. Butler drops. Backlund to the attack. Backlund walks in, knocked down. And again, no call. Oh, that's a trip. Dowdy doesn't get anything on him but his skates. It's got to be a tripping penalty, but not called. Well, even some rust on the officials, perhaps. Shislane Baron, Tom Cowell let that one go and back him with a nifty move. Looked like he was in home free. Another sign of the assertive, assertiveness you've seen from Backlund this year. His, his growth has been really quite impressive from where he was just a couple of years ago. Long stretch without a whistle. Here's Weidman moving up. Dennis Weidman looks to center. Cut back to the point. It's speed a shot. That goes wide. Marcus granlin has got it. Dumps it back in the corner. Byron went after it. But the Kings up with it. Did Clifford DeVay. Trevor Lewis on the right side. Back to Lyndon Bay. And Granlin does a nice job defensively. Then gets pasted and knocked down by Clifford. It'll be Weidman ahead for Westgar. Give and go with Granlin. And one of the things they say about Granlin is he uses his wingers well. Saw a good shift for him there, Ray, with that defensive play. Deep in Calgary territory, there's an icing call against the Kings. And that'll endear him to his coaching staff as they see he can play at both ends of the ice. We'll get another look at Michael Backlund's move where he dances by Drew Doughty. And look, it's Doughty's skate that takes him down. That's a tripping penalty. Da Backlund with a beautiful move. There's nothing that touches Backlund except Doughty's skate. And when Doughty got back to the bench, he had a little wake-up chat awaiting him from Daryl Sutter. That was a face-off win by Sean Monahan, but the Kings get it back, move up, and Dustin Brown's shot doesn't get through. Here's a drive off the goal post. Hot shot there taken by Jarrett Stoll at the line. And it had Ordeo beat, but the post bails him out. And an interesting start for Ordeo as we near the halfway point. He's faced just, well, they say now 10 shots as they gave him a shot there on the stole one that hit the goal post. Not deflected in as we approach the midway mark of this second period. Bob Hartley joking about Ordeo's coolness, not feeling the pressure of his first start. There's a blocker save on Kopitar. Said he would sleep like a baby last night and uh, seems unflappable. And has hung in there after that quick first goal against him at the NHL level. Brody up ahead. David Jones doesn't control. Quick counter here to Foley back in and Ordeo made the stop. A rebound there as he isn't able to control it. Stajan gives it away. Williams rolls it wide. Brody takes a look. And feeds it ahead. Stajan to work. Right wing for David Jones. Moves into the middle. Another backhand chance is stopped by Quick. 
Three backhand opportunities by Jones and stage to the backhand off the side of the net. As that line heads off. That was a really good move by Jones as he walked Muzzin to the middle. And as you mentioned, took yet another backhand chance. Jones needs a stretch of games where he can stay healthy. He's just battled it over the last couple of years, but he's a powerful kid. Just 30 years old. He's got some good years in front of him. 30 years old in August, rather. Hit by Richards on Galliardi, but the Flames advance is Hookler. Galliardi, Hookler, shot! And Quick read it beautifully. Coming across to make the stop. Ackland in behind the net. Tangled up there as it comes back to Chris Russell at the point. Galliardi up high in support. Hookler in behind the net. Backland was loose momentarily in front. Now he'll take over. Hoodler plays it to Butler, shoving it on the backhand along the boards. Backlund and Richards tie up. Richards down and took Backlund's stick with him. Now they do some fencing and play is stopped. We'll get the first penalty of the game. Will it be a penalty or matching penalties? We'll sort it out with 8.39 remaining here in the second period that his team has developed a reputation around the league as a hard-working team, and they want that to continue. Well, he's gotten an excellent game so far from David Jones. Jones has had two really good chances here in the second period, both of them on the backhand. This second one leads to a wild scramble, and then later in the shift, Yuri Hoodler takes the return pass, and as you mentioned, Chris, well read by Jonathan Quick as he slides across in the butterfly. Backlund and Richards both in the box, so it's four on four hockey. And it's T.J. Brody with the move across. Chance and Quick makes another stop. Rebound and Quick got a piece of that. What a point blank range shot from Matt Stajan. So first Giordano and then Stajan who's got it again. Calgary pressing for the equalizer. Comes across for Brody. Trying to sidestep Kopitar. In deep in the corner. Now Regeer picks up the chase. Brody hangs on and hands off. Stage and tied up with Regeer and Justin Williams will take over for the Kings. Here's Williams and Kopitar for the attack. Williams plays it in and comes up with it. He gets driven into the boards into the corner by Giordano. Mitchell thought about moving in, steps back and Carter holds the zone. Now it's Brody up for Monaghan. The youngster over the line with the move shot. Monaghan took it high and wide. What a chance for Rookie Monaghan, and now Downey back for Carter, cruising down the right wing. Boy, that play by Monaghan defied the 19 years of age. He barged in and just missed beating quick. Now oh, puck the team out in front, and really ricocheted in. The Foley sends it back, and Mitchell gets things organized. Approaching the 13-minute mark of the second period. Weidman for Byron. He'll dash in with David Jones. And now a Weidman shot is blocked, and the Kings will come back. Nine seconds of this four-on-four. And the play is offside at the line. We'll step out. Keely Humphreys in the booth when we return to Calgary. Heat champion, Mark Giordano mentioned to me this morning when we knew we were going to honor uh, many of the local Olympic athletes that uh, your event with Heather Moyes was his favorite at the Olympics. That must be neat to hear. That is, that's very neat to hear. Such an honor. That's, um, that's super cool, actually. What's it been like in returning home? Oh, it, um, it's actually really unbelievable the amount of times I've been stopped and just driving my car and then the window gets knocked on and people just want to say congratulations. The, the outpouring support is absolutely amazing and I'm so proud to be A, from Calgary, but B, from Canada. Well, that's what's so nice. It's your homegrown uh, Calgary and train here and uh, obviously a very special moment to be saluted here at the Saddle Dome tonight. It really is. I mean, such an honor. There's 40 of us uh, Olympians here that were in Sochi. And so the fact that, you know, the Flames have us all here and we were able to kind of kick things off, it's, um, again, an, a great honor. Going to show a few pictures. Nice to share it with family, young and old. Yes, definitely. I mean, it, it really means nothing without the support of, of family. And so that's those are the people that mean the most.
now you're part of a of a bigger team when you're in Sochi, and uh, I know you uh, encouraged the women's hockey team with a letter, and uh, you also got a chance to cheer for uh, the men's team as well. Definitely did. Went to the semifinal and the final game. I mean, hockey. A from Canada, B being here in Calgary, it, um, I mean, it's in the blood of all of us, but you get to really know your teammates and just love supporting each and every one of them. And when you get a chance to go out and, and watch them do what they do, it's uh, it's pretty spectacular. Going to stay with Kaylee here for a few more minutes in this second period as the Flames try to climb back onto even terms with the Kings. Dennis Weidman. Stretch pass looking for Monaghan. He's bumped in front of the flame fence by Drew Gatti. And there's Andre or Jordan Nolan. And now it's Jeff Carter who will send it out to center ice. And Russell will scamper back to get it. Now I heard that the most nervous moment for you was, was being the flag bearer in the closing <laughs> ceremonies. That seemed to go okay. It was. It did. I mean... I, I've got my job and, and competing. I mean, I've done it year in, year out, and I know what to do, and I'm confident in my abilities. But flag bearer, I was like, what if I trip or start hitting other people with the flagpole? There is so much pressure. So it uh, was great. You, you did us proud there and in competition. It's been a big thrill to have you with us. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate Kaylee it. Kaylee Humphreys, two-time Olympic gold medalist. Or the Kings rather have the game's first penalty, Drew Doughty. A delay a game penalty. That's the second time tonight he's made a rather odd play with a puck that's just flown high off his stick. So Doughty sits in the Flames with the 27th ranked power play. We'll have a chance to equal the game. And Ray, a Kings penalty kill that has struggled of late. They oh, were gave they up three last night. Sorry, Chris. Were they bad last night? Oh, six consecutive games now. They've allowed a power play goal against the back. They're just 14 kills in their last 23 shorthanded. So Calgary will try and add to those woes. Here comes Russell. Backlund's on the ice. Giordano. Gary Hoodler. As Giordano sends it back across to Russell. David Jones also out. One time by Hoodler doesn't get through. Kings don't clear. Here's Russell. Tees it up. Fires and deflected by Backlund. Into the corner. Jones gets it back. Up top, Giordano, a quick shot. And Jonathan Quick gets a piece of that. Into the slot, Jones sets it up. Mark Giordano again, holds. Back across for Hoodler. Giordano. Russell, backland parked in front as it slides to Hoodler. Giordano again, working it across. Hoodler fakes. No shot yet. Now he will. Trips it. And that one nearly gave Regeer a shave. That one came up high and just like it almost grazed Regeer. Russell again sizes it up. Giordano for Hoodler. Good puck movement here by the Flames. Giordano shot. Knocked out in front as Jones was parked at the side of the net. 35 seconds left and it's all been down in the King's zone. Captain gives it back to Russell. Jones in front. Backlund's there. And Hoodler on this near side. Tees it up again. Fury. Hoodler a shot. And quick. Got that. Good play by Backlund. Out muscled. Regeer still in the zone. Almost the entire two minutes down to the final 10 seconds. Hoodler again. Rolling puck in. Backlund missed the redirect. Dowdy gets set for return. Hoodler one more time, plays it across. Bouncing there, in front for Jones, and he couldn't get the shot away. Dowdy's on the ice, and now racing after it against Brody. Drew Dowdy swooping in, and he's cut off and knocked off the puck by Brody. Up past Colbert and out. Mitchell plays it in, and Kopitar has to leave it. Now Colbert over the line, flips it to the left side for Cavalieri. Camilleri up with it again. A bad angle shot, and Jonathan Quick will hold on. A really impressive puck movement for Calgary. They've just got no finish. Jonathan Quick's able to snuff that shot, and the Kings can get recalibrated. But this play all starts a face-off wing by the Kings, and Dwight King doesn't play the puck up the boards for some reason. 
he freezes the puck there. There was nobody on the blue line for the Flames. He could have played that around the boards, and when he doesn't, the puck doesn't leave the zone for two minutes. A real good chance and deflection by Backlund. Another excellent stop by Jonathan Quick. And the Kings can thank Jonathan Quick for their one nothing lead because they've been outplayed here in the first 37 minutes of this game. The Flames were rusty early, but since that time, I don't think LA's had much of the play at all. Shots 13-5 in favor of Calgary in the second period, 21-12 overall. Ice, ice! But yet to beat Jonathan Quick. We've got an update, let's check in with James. Get a push. Certainly are. We were there just at the end of January, and they looked really good in a game against Vancouver. Very aggressive, very fast, and Maurice was looking forward to the break because in the mini camp that they had, he felt they could change a little bit of the systematic play, and he was very encouraged by where they were. Marcus Granlund lines out here against the Richards group for the Kings. Granlund feeding across. He's out with Camilleri. And Byron, so a different group here. It'll go Camilleri now to the bench. And Colburn comes over the boards. Nolan cruising down the left wing for the Kings. Lost the handle. And Brody starts back. Knocked off balance by Nolan. And a penalty pending against the Kings. Nolan takes down Brody again. And will there be more than one penalty to Jordan Nolan? Well, if he had the initial one, he should have the second one, too. A rather undisciplined play by Nolan, who had a running battle last night with Bordalo in Colorado. Nolan ended up taking a healthy run at him, and he missed him and hit the boards. He looked rather shaken up. Now, Nolan's going to go for sure. It looks like Ladislav Schmid is, too. So after Nolan loses the puck, he pushes Brody down once, and then as the play goes back across the blue line, they get all tied up again. So Nolan's got at least one penalty. We'll see if there's more to it. Daryl Sutter's talked about improving the discipline on the team. The Kings have taken, or have been shorthanded 50 times more this season than the Flames, so about once per game so far this year. So there's the second one from Nolan after Brody gave a shove back to Nolan. And with two minutes remaining and in it the is, second period. Sorry, Chris, there is an extra two minutes to Nolan. So it's, he heads to the room early. Steve, no, Steve Miller, the linesman, came over to the bench and said, you need an extra guy to serve the minor penalty. So Daryl Sutter will select one of his forwards. And they'll look to get out of their zone this time on the penalty kill. Same two forwards, Stolen King to start. Tyler Toffoli will serve the minor penalty. So the Flames had almost the entire two minutes on their first power play of the night with possession in the King zone. A couple of shots and Bob Hartley's crew goes back on the power play here in the late stages of the second period. One for 15 since scoring three power play goals against Nashville. They have three power play goals in their two wins against LA so far this year. We're told that Jordan Nolan actually did get the double minor prior to the infraction with speed so six minutes for nolan and it's a four minute power play the flames want an explanation from the officials here okay. they they think it's four minutes total not four in addition it's a cross check and two roughing penalties against nolan a roughing minor to speed so a four-minute power play for the Flames. The double minor, the triple minor, which you don't see often. And Quick holds on. 
That's a pretty healthy hole that Jordan Nolan's put his team in in a, in a one nothing game. So again, the group that started the last power play, Backlund, Jones, Hoodler, Russell, and Giordano. Dwight King to take the draw. Backlund gets waved. Every time two centermen get kicked out, Chris, you can hear from both benches, just drop the puck. And I heard it from both sides. And probably a lot of viewers watching at home. Well, if they did, they heard a couple adjectives to it as well. Chris Russell leads the Flames out. Over the line is Backlund. Chipping it in behind the net, chance for Revere to clear, and he wires it off the glass. Past Giordano and down. Michael Backlund has nine goals in his last 14 games, six in seven. And after scoring three times in the first 31 games this year. Pass is flipped by Hitler. Backlund chops it back to Hitler. And now they'll get it organized. Giordano fires in a tone stop by Quick. Giordano to Russell. Doughty doesn't have a stick. Backlund across. Doughty without the stick is able to make a defensive play against Jones. Final minute, second period, and the Kings are able to clear. Boy, Jonathan Quick is sharp again tonight. So the 11 hour time difference has not affected him. Gamaleri wrapped it around. He dropped in and intercepted by Boyanov, who clears the zone. Half minute left here in this second period. Dennis Weidman pounded by King, who now hits to the Los Angeles bench. Monahan sends it in, knocked down by Quick. He'll play it onto the glass. Brody holds it in. Monahan's got it. Back for TJ Brody. Takes the shot, a wooden timer right on. And look at the positioning of Jonathan Quick and Colburn on the doorstep. Gets a reaction from Quick and the Kings. And Coburn's going to go to the penalty box here. Earlier on, you see Giordano knock the stick out of Drew Doughty's hands. Now Doughty has to play without him, and he makes a real solid read here as he gets up to bump David Jones off the puck. And with just six seconds left in the period, Joe Coburn's minor penalty will move this back to four on four. Coburn took an extra whack at Jonathan Quick in front of the net. See Coburn right there. Not much of a, not much of a tap on the blocker. However, that's enough for Coburn to sit and look like Olympic rules were in effect there. Really similar, wasn't it? So effectively, that will do it for the Flames power play. When Coburn's minor expires, there'll be six seconds left in the Nolan penalties. Stole on this faceoff. Kings win it. Dowdy gets a chance and he wired it wide. What a chance. Horn for Drew Dowdy who shows some frustration after a clean faceoff win once again by Jared Stoll. Yeah, you couldn't have drawn that up much better if you're a Los Angeles Kings. You have one of your best face-off men in Jared Stoll. He wins the draw. Little help from Williams. And then Boma fans out to take away the D-to-D -D one-timer to Muzzin. And when he does that, Doughty's able to walk in and tee it up. He just misses it wide. Shots for 15-6. Calgary in the second. But it's still 1-0 Los Angeles as we head back to James Dutton. Anger and uh, there's still more bugging Ray. I'll tell you what's really bugging me. And that <laughs> happened today. TSN released their new phone app for all hockey. So you get it on your phone, you download the app. I've got 100 tweets of people asking me why it doesn't work on an Android phone. How the heck would I know why it doesn't work? That bugs me. What you should do is tweet James, at James Duthie, because he is part of our IT department. He'll straighten you out. So that's what's bugging Ray tonight. It really is. I'm, how would I know? I can barely turn the phone on. I'm the least technical guy I know. Well, what's 
bugging the Calgary Flames as they haven't found a way to solve Jonathan Quick so far tonight. As we start the third period, one nothing. And again, four on four. For just about the first two minutes of this third period, an offside at the line as Carter and Kopitar moved in. As much as the Flames have played a really good first two periods, out shooting the Kings 23 to 13, it goes without saying that they cannot give up another goal here. To chase two goals down to Los Angeles would be almost impossible for them. And you almost get the sense that maybe Calgary might have missed their best chance in the second period where L.A. defensively gave them some, some pretty good chances. Can they generate something against Quick, who's been exceptionally short? We'll find out. But they can't give up another one here. Kings are 16-0-0 this year when leading after two. Last night it was a comeback victory for Los Angeles. Here's Carter moving in, a centering pass, and it bounced away from Kopitar and out through center. Woodstock, Ontario native Jake Muzzin will give it away. It was picked off there by Camilleri, who was at the end of a shift, and the pass back slides all the way into the Calgary zone. Dennis Weidman. Former Elmira Sugar King sends it ahead. Backlund is bumped along the board by Stoll. Lesson dueling in the corner. Up against Hoodler. Backlund looking for it, and it slides to Dowdy, who reverses it to the near side for Muzzin. 35 seconds remaining in the penalty to Joe Colburn, and five seconds after that, Jordan Nolan's second minor will expire. Here comes Brown. Mike Richards, Billy Mitchell moved in. Here's Alec Martinez in front, Brown, and a nice club stop there for Yoni Ordeo. Brown, who got his 11th goal of the season, the game's only marker early in the first, gets himself into pretty good position. He gets behind Weidman, shields him off, and then Ordeo makes his best stop of the night, a glove stop on Brown. You see Brown spin, get to the inside, and get to the puck first. Weidman doesn't deny him body position, nor get his stick on the puck. And Brown's chance is turned away by Ordeo. Dustin Brown's been one of the best kings tonight. There's a point off shot that gets through. TJ Brody in his own zone. So it's Williams and Richards now. Paul Byron's on the ice along with Matt Stegen. Flip through center. And Byron trying to club it down. Colbert out of the box. And now Toffoli was serving the second of the three minors against Nolan is back, and the team's return to full strength. Nolan still has two minutes to serve. And an icing call against the Kings. The NHL on TSN is brought to you by Asante. From investment tax and estate planning to retirement, Asante Wealth Management provides complete financial advice. Drew Doughty prior to the game with Jermaine Franklin mentioned the goal of the Kings is to get into fourth place in the conference, which would give them home ice in the opening round. They are in a stretch of games here with four of their next 12 games against teams that are currently in the playoffs. So he's trying to make hay, although at this time of the year, doesn't necessarily mean those games are are any easier to win. Galliardi off the board. There's Hoodler. And the puck played away from speed back into Calgary Ice. Here's Lyndon Bay on it. Trevor Lewis from the corner. Back to Bay. Drops it off. Martinez shot off a stick and broke the stick of speed. Now Lewis broke the stick of Russell. So a couple of clean defensemen, and Russell's just knocked out of his hand. Here's Clifford to the net. Can't jam it in. A minute there, neither claims defenseman had a stick. Alec Martinez had room. Shot. Oh, he whistled that inches wide. Close call there. It'll come back to Martinez again. Martinez a shot and a club stop by Ordeo looking around the screen provided by Trevor Lewis. 
Good stop again by Ordeo. Chris, you were just mentioning how the Kings have a good stretch of games here where they maybe can make some hay. And despite the fact that they don't score any goals, you see them 26th in the NHL this year. Look where they were when they won the Stanley Cup, 29th. Their goals against are almost identical. Remember though, in that Stanley Cup year, they picked up Jeff Carter deep into the season. Will a move like that help the Kings become one of those feared upon teams again? Because they're already a team that people don't really want to match up against in the playoffs. What a chance there, King on the second try, it's in. Ordeal the stop, and Dwight King wraps in the rebound, and Los Angeles has a two goal lead. Well, there's the goal that Calgary just can't give up, and it starts again with a face-off in the Calgary zone. We, Chris, you've mentioned several times how good the Kings are on the draw, but the Kings lose the draw, except it's Brown to it first. Brown shields off Giordano, and then makes a nice play in front of the net to King. King pokes it past Ordeo, but the mistake for Calgary is that Giordano's knocked off, or not able to push Brown off the puck, and then he lets King get to the inside of him, and for King, who had an unreal start to the year. 10 goals in the first 36 games. That's just his second in his last 25. A pie, a pie! Gets an assist. Muzzin also figures in the scoring at 3.30. Dustin Brown, prior to the Olympic break, had one road point. He has three in the first two games since the Sochi Olympics. See Dwight King enjoying the fact that he's back on the scoreboard. Nice play here by Brown from behind the net. You see where Giordano had got caught a step away from King, and he's such a big body that it's really difficult to push him out of the way once he's got positioning. And King's able to push it by Ordeo. Both goals on Yoni Ordeo tonight have been rather similar. A, a shot that was pushed underneath him. David Jones trying to walk in, and Williams with the defensive play cut him off. It'll come back to Giordano. Across it goes, and the shot is knocked down, but over by Williams. Stage it gets it back. Jones rolled it wide. Rebound, Boba! And that one stayed out. May have ricocheted off the post. Giordano, a off balance shot, knocked down by Boynov, who couldn't find it. Williams does, and slides it back under the pads of Jonathan Quick. What a chance for Boma, and somehow it stayed out. And Boma stage in, and Jones put together a really good shift. Jones' shot misses the net, and Boma rings this off the right goal post. You see Boma in tight to Quick. He's got to fight through the traffic, and then this gets behind Quick and clinks off the goal post as Lance Boma comes that close to having the lead. Marcus Grandlin, they Face off win, Russell shot off target. Dennis Weidman for Byron centering it. Grandlin unable to redirect that. Trevor Lewis missing Clifford with that pass. And now it's cut off by Carter. Jeff Carter a shot and he fired that one high and out of play. Carter had such a great Olympics for Canada. I thought start to finish he became one of their most dangerous forwards and he's really had some pretty good legs tonight. I'm, Interested in watching these players coming back from from Russia and having to deal with the time change and while it may not seem like much to some people, it is an absolute killer coming back from Russia. We did it last year and we're just broadcasting the games and it took us 10 to 12 days to feel normal. Carter hasn't had much time at all and I thought he's had good legs last night, really good legs again tonight too. On a line with Jonathan Taves and Patrick Marlowe through most of the Olympics. Hard to find a guy who didn't play well there in the late stages of that tournament. Carter ended an eight-game scoring drought in the NHL last night against Colorado. I am getting a little bit of a giggle about all the coaches saying, you know, the Team Canada defense first and the way they play defense is going to be their blueprint. Well, all you need to do is put those blue liners together and then get a good start. Not much teams, have, or not many teams would have depth like that. What a blue line collection they had. Pretty good group when you keep the Norris Trophy winner out of the lineup. Dustin Brown fires that in from center. You talk about their lack of offense, maybe looking for some, but that'll be a good sign when you got Brown scoring again. Carter 
off the schneid last night, as well as Justin Williams. There are some offensive players in that lineup that can give Daryl Sutter more. They got three goals from their centerman last night, as Kopitar had a couple of goals, and Jarrett Stoll had one. The guy that's really got to find something is Mike Richards for them. He's such a terrific player, and he's been a big game player throughout his career, but he's got one goal in his last 35 games. And I know he's not necessarily a goal scorer per se, but they're going to need more from Richards. And they must look at that as something that can be there for them. All of those guys that have struggled, they're playoff tested performers, but they might need another guy. And if a guy like Camilleri or Molson or even Marion Gabrick comes their way, you would think it would change the dynamic of their forwards a little bit. Richards has scored 24 times. He's twice been a 30-goal scorer. Backlund knocked down by Boynov and a penalty upcoming against the Kings defenseman. And Ordeo goes to the bench for an extra attacker. Off Galliardi. And the puck played at center by the Kings, and it will be Slava Boyanov with the tripping penalty. Played power play. When we come back. Tim Horton Pryor just around the corner. Live coverage from Kamloops gets underway Saturday, 4.30 Eastern. 1.30 Pacific on TSN as we turn Vic Rudder loose again. And a penalty to Slava Boyanov that you don't agree with, Ray. I don't know why that's a trip. He hit him with his hip. I thought Doughty's non-call was a penalty earlier. An attempted hip check where he tripped him. That's a hip check. He didn't go too low. It's not a clip. In any case, Calgary's on the power play. 0 for 3 on the night. Sustained pressure on one of those advantages. Here's Hoodler. Back to Russell. Takes the wrist shot and a blast by Giordano right on. Jones can't come up with a rebound. Knocked down by Giordano. What a good hold that was. Shot bounces wide and out in front. And it will be cleared by Jared Stoll. Good puck movement by Calgary leads to the Giordano one-timer. But Jonathan Quick again has done a terrific job of tracking the puck. He moved across and stopped the shot with his chest. Really, really aggressive play by Quick. Offside at the line against the Calgary power play with a minute 22 left in the Voyanov minor. Quick finds the puck through the traffic and look, he's already over there waiting for it. This doesn't quite get to him as it actually hits Regeer. But Quick is standing right in front of the puck. That's a real good read of the play by the Kings goaltender. Going off at the box was alleged to have accused Quick of knocking the net off on purpose. A controversial disallowed goal in the Russia-US game. Here's Kopitar. Kopitar drags and a shot around the net and an open net. Lewis missed it. Trevor Lewis off the side of the net with about half the net to shoot at. Oh my gosh, Trevor Lewis has got two goals this season, both of them in the same game. He hasn't scored in the other 50 games. That might be why. And he won't get a better chance than that. What a play by Kopitar. A retreat for the Flames, and now let's see if they can take advantage of it. It's played back for Weidman. He overskeets it at the line, it will come out. And Jeff Carter's on it. Bounce back, Ian off Camilleri, and that's uh, an offside. There's Trevor Lewis shaking his head on the Kings bench. Watch the play by Kopitar. He tries to toe drag first. Now the puck goes behind the net. I mean, that is as wide open a net as you can get. Trevor Lewis is going to have a nightmare about this. Push it into the net. Shot it wide. And with Ordeo on the other side of the net, the Flames dodging what would have been a game-ending chance. And that would have been Ed Curtis. Late stages of this Calgary power play. Hoodler gets it back to Giordano. Throws it at the net. It slides through the traffic. And Quick will pounce on that as Dowdy clears Jones from the front of the net. Against Los Angeles with the way they kill penalties, you better be willing to shoot the puck and get people to the front of the net because they do a good job of shielding people away. But there's the double screen in front. Both Backland and Dro and Jones are gonna outnumber Regeer in front of the net. The puck is tipped, yet Quick again is an excellent spot to make the stop. Face off controlled by Stoll. Giordano holds it in. Dying seconds of the power play. 
the captain, sends it to the net again, loose, Backlund took a whack at it, and Quick smothers that as the penalty comes to an end and Voinov returns. So the chances have been there for Calgary in the, in the second period. They dominated that period, Chris, as you mentioned earlier, and Quick was had the answer for every one of those chances. And now they give up the early goal here in the third period, and they're going to have to stay with this, hope for one quick chance here that they can somehow crack the, the shell that has been Jonathan Quick. To finish the story on Voinov, who has denied that he ever made those comments about Quick intentionally knocking the net off. What do you think? Uh, I, I think that there's there's a possibility he said something close to that. But to, to me, the, the the whole issue there becomes you've got an emotionally charged area. The Russians are. You know, we're so disappointed in the game and the way it ended and the goal that was disallowed. And I know it's the IOC rule, but my gosh, the net wasn't even off. So I, I don't know that there's that big a deal about it, but it sure sounded good, didn't it? It was kind of like back to the Olympics in Vancouver with Kessler and, and the and Luongo. Kind of the same thing. Stage and tries to sit. The only reason you raise it, well, it's a lot of people raise their eyebrows thinking, well, that would be an interesting first meeting in the dressing room once Voinov and Quick returned to Los Angeles. As it turned out, since neither of them had a medal, maybe it wouldn't have been so difficult. Here's a guy who's got a medal, second gold medal. Who Dowdy ahead for Jeff Carter, who unable to take it. Chris Russell dances back with Colburn driving the lane. The shot, and Quick again gets bumped traffic again. He cuts down over the foot, and Dowdy takes a whack at it too after it. Looks like Dowdy had directed Colburn into the goaltender. But Jonathan Quick has been feisty and very good tonight. Well, that's the second time Joe Colburn has been back on top of Jonathan Quick, as you see. Quick trips Colburn as he gets away from the net. Quick not happy with the amount of contact between the goaltender and the Flames. Colburn thinks that there should be a penalty somewhere along the line there. And the one thing Calgary's gonna have to be careful of here is when there's this much traffic around the goaltender, it alerts the referees, not that they're not looking for it anyway, but they're gonna have to be careful of that blue paint to make sure that they don't take a penalty here as they try to climb back into this game. Eight seconds shy of the midway mark of the third period. Destin Brown has a goal and an assist. The Kings have a two nothing lead. And that puck up onto the netting out of play. Causes a stoppage and a break. The Kings up by two. Period the Flames really poured the heat to Cal or to to Los Angeles and Jonathan Quick was the reason this game stayed at 1-0. He's an excellent skater, he covers the net so well. You saw him get around the back of the net to smother that dump and he had to deal with David Jones a couple of times. This save on Hoodler is an excellent example of his ability to read the play and there he had to make a difficult stop on Matt stage. 25 shots, 25 saves for Jonathan Quick thus far. Andrew Martin Jones last night gave Quick an extra 24 hours to recover from the trip back from Sochi. Off the skate, it bounces out in front of the net, and Robin Regeer will send it through center. Speed for Monaghan. Up at the line, it went past Cavallari, and it will knock that to the corner. Regeer pushing it ahead, and will slide down the ice. And Ordeo out to play it. There's Monaghan who set the alarm to watch the gold medal game. The only member of the Flames who got up at 5 a.m. to make sure he watched Team Canada win gold. C.J. Brody up to Hoodler. Might have been a few veterans who just stayed up. And yeah, that's possible too, isn't it? See, that's veteran experience. That's where down to the attack. A 
along with Backlund, bouncing it through, and Willie Mitchell breaks that up and clears back to center. Well, you mentioned it early, this is not a team that you want to fall behind against, and the Kings have been tough in protecting this lead so far tonight. Tyler Toffoli trying to get a shot through. Toffoli being elevated to the top line, along with Roger Kopitar and Justin Williams trying to provide that extra offense that the Kings have been lacking. And we like what we saw from him last year in the playoffs in his first taste of Stanley Cup action. Seems to be a real clever player and doesn't have that fear of playing with the big boys. Here's Downey wiring that one high and it ricochets back in front. Boy, he's had some looks tonight, hasn't he? He has had a little trouble getting the puck on the net. He's missed it a couple of times, but he's been into the play for three or four really good chances. Williams takes down Chris Russell, who drops the stick, stage it behind the net. Stays with it. Loose stick behind the goal. It'll come back to Weidman. No shot yet, and now he sends it wide, and it takes off the glass. Down, he tripped over the stick. And the puck kept in by Calgary. Dennis Weidman. Colbert. Cross into the skates of Smead. Still looking for his first Calgary Flame goal. The former Flame with year, and Colburn stepped up on him. Now in behind the net, Dowdy with a hit on Jones. Stajan gets it back. In behind for Colbert. Trying to swoop out in front. Colbert centering off the skate to Regeer and wired wide by Stajan. And it hangs out to center. He's trying to get a change in as Smead moves up. To the corner. Knocked away by Regeer, and LA clears it with under seven left. Shots 25 20 flames, but the Kings continue to lead 2 0. All that zone time that the Flames had, excellent work. They stayed on the puck. They didn't get the puck on the net one time, however. The Grandland line comes out. Turnover, and there's Trevor Lewis. Trying to barge his way in unsuccessfully, and Brody. Flips to center, Martinez there, and from his own side of the red line, it's going to be an icing call against the Kings. There's Martin Jones, the Kings' backup goaltender. He supplanted Ben Scrivens earlier in the year. He's had an excellent rookie season. He played his junior hockey here in Calgary for the Calgary Hitmen. An undrafted goaltender was signed as a free agent, then went back and played as an overage. Martin Jones is solidly built his resume in Manchester, the American Hockey League. They felt two years ago that he was about ready to play. He struggled a little bit last year, and then this year when the opportunity came with the injury to Jonathan Quick, he took that opportunity and barged through the door. They loved the way that Jones has played for them, and last night, even though giving up four goals is kind of a wild, messy game, he made those couple terrific saves late that helped solidify the win. Won his first eight games as a starter for the Kings this year with an 0.98 goals against average and a save percentage of 966. Remarkable stuff when Quick was hurt. And like a lot of the new goaltenders, six foot three, covers a lot of the net, has got excellent quickness down low, able to shut down the bottom of the net very well. Went to Manchester during the Olympic break, and the Kings had to make a call for Jamie Store to come in and handle some goaltending for the team as they practiced during the Olympic break. First time he'd had the pads on since the last Olympics and Olympic break. Uh, hopefully, Storzy he gave it a, <laughs> a better effort than he did when we were shooting on him. He hated practice, couldn't stand it. Not that anyone loves it, but we used to give it to him all the time. Come on, Storzy. Get in front of one of these things in practice. I think Red O'Bara liked the uh, warm-up this morning. We were watching this morning. Barra got hit in the head four times this morning. And the fifth time just missed him. Because Kevin Westgard took, took his head off. Iron in a shot that off a stick wide. Stage back on it. Tried to center. And it picked off by Williams. And he heads north along with going off over the line. There's a chance for Tapoli right on the rebound, and Ordeo stopped that too. A couple of saves for Yanni Ordeo and Byron.
scampering back, slides it in and goes after it. Up against Slava Voina. It'll be revered for Williams, hands it away. David Jones can't get the shot through. Tyler Tavoli checked along the boards. Now Williams, he can't get it out. And Quick says enough of that. He comes out to freeze it and get a face off. The performer of the game is brought to you by GMC Sierra. The Kings came into this game looking for more offense. They got six goals the other night in Colorado. They get one early from Dustin Brown, who has just been a handful all night. He's been the best Kings forward. He's been involved in traffic, physically involved, has a goal in the first, an assist on the White Kings marker in the third. Your GMC performer of the game is Kings captain, Dustin Brown. And again, prior to the Olympics, one road point, three in the first two games back. He came back with a bad taste in his mouth. First, no medal, and uh, secondly, did not play very much in the final two periods of the bronze medal game against Finland. And wore that on his sleeve a little bit. Yeah, he did, as they were trying to get their way back into the game. Uh, Dan Biles was short their bench, and it didn't include Brown, and you're right, he wasn't too thrilled with it. Here's Trevor Lewis with some room down the right side. Lewis in, shot! This is wide side, and it ricochets outside the line. Byron hopped over the boards. And he's out there now with Backlund and Galliardi. They're going to call a high stick to stop play with just under four minutes remaining. If you're a Calgary fan, this is just what you feared would happen in the third period. They had that second period where they carried the play. They probably deserved better than a 1-0 deficit going into period three but the kings have with that early goal here in the third have pretty well strangled the life out of this building and while the flames have had one real good shift where they had zone time they had a power play where they moved the puck around but really haven't had much going in this third period into the break the flames were six three and one in their final ten the kings were going the other direction they won two of their final 11 games before the Sochi Olympics, but threatening here to start the post Olympics with two consecutive wins on the road. Out of Martinez, I defeated the Brown on the right side off the of skate and deep into the Calgary zone. Dwight King, who has a goal, comes up with a puck looking for Brown, and the Flames will clear it from the front of the net. Shots evening out now, 25 23 in favor of the Flames, who had a healthier lead in that department through 40 minutes. Up for Stajan. And Stajan sends it back into his own zone, and Kopitar goes after it. Here's Toffoli sending it to the net. Nordio had to be quick on that through a screen. Knocked down by Boyd up. Nelson touches it, and that will halt play. Well, Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey continues this week with the Maple Leafs in New York. They'll face off against the Rangers. Live coverage of this game presented by Molson Canadian getting underway at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TSN. Of course, that's Trade Center 2014 day. And it'll be a busy night in the NHL. Some new addresses by then. Face off. Brody trying to hold it in and Muzzin will dump it out. Two and a half to go. Up for Hoodler. Right side looking for Boma. Cleared by Dowdy. Now the next game will be in Edmonton Saturday. Carolina Montreal next on the Los Angeles King dance card. Well, they didn't follow the trend of the night, did they? Here's Hoodler trying to walk in. A chance, and Dustin Brown comes back defensively, thwarting a chance for Sean Monahan. So Brown getting it done at both ends. And now looking for a bouncing puck at center. He'll roll it in with the net empty and rolls it wide. So the extra attacker out with a minute 40 to go. 
And Brown on the ice looking for his third point. Backlund comes over the boards as the Flames change things up. Russell for Backlund. Gathering speed through center. Michael Backlund to the attack. Dashing in. Almost went coast to coast. Kings bounce it down the ice. Does that have enough? It'll go wide. Weidman back to get it. Backlund returns it to Weidman. Over the line. The pass too far for Jones. And to Foley. Tried to dump it out. Byron knocked it out of midair. Final minute. Third period. Lane's trying to break through against Jonathan Quick. Boynov in his own zone. Camilleri quickly on him, takes it away. T.J. Brody. Cross it goes for Weidman. Jones leaned on by Regeer. Unable to clear it, but now Kopitar will get it out. Down to a half minute remaining. Brody rink drive over the line. Galliardi a step ahead and offside with a couple of dozen seconds remaining. Well, Bob Hartley said this was two seven-game series for them. They're going to be down one game by the time this is over. It's, they played a pretty good hockey game, the Flames did. Weren't able to crack through against Jonathan Quick in particular in the middle 30 minutes. From the 10-minute mark of the first period right through to the end of the second, Calgary carried the play and Quick was the difference. Five-game home winning streak for Calgary in the balance. And Jonathan Quick and the Kings trying to end a four-game losing streak here at the Saddle Dome. These used to be some of my least favorite timeouts a coach took. <laughs> You're down a couple of goals with 24 seconds left. And I know you don't give up, but for the players, it's, it feels like this is unnecessary. Bob Hartley does not want, and he made this point to us, didn't he, Chris, a couple of times, does not want his players thinking that it's all over, that the season's over. He wants to push as they pushed and made some strides this year. So the message consistent. They win the draw, they deflect it in. But really only one question left here tonight as the Kings get it down the ice. And this will be another icing call with 9.8 on the clock. So splitting the two games, Jones and Colorado quick here. Now they'll play again Saturday afternoon at home. So the Kings, like many teams, busy as they as they start back off the break. Backlund won the draw. Shot goes wide of the net. Into the corner. They try and get it out in front for one last shot, but it's left to be. And Jonathan Quick has his fourth shutout of the season, the 29th of his career, as he makes 25 saves. En route to the victory here. So back-to-back -back wins for Los Angeles out of the break. As they post a 2-0 victory here over the Flames, who lose their first home game after winning five in a row. Dustin Brown, the hero of the night, with a goal and an assist, and quick the shutout. Once again, 2-0 the final. So long from Calgary. Darren Detition and SportsCenter is now.